So we're going to do a paired comparison analysis now. Our client, again, it's a single client, and the um, focus for this client is prioritizing. These are things you want, and you would like to figure out some order or preference for them. So would you come up and just share a little data with us? Um, so I basically want to explore um, the different, my different ideas on a career that I want. Um, I'm going to be graduating in May, so i got to kind of figure that out pretty soon. Um, these are all jobs that I've um, researched and thought of before, and I kind of have still, like, interests in doing them once I get out of school. So. Okay. And can you tell us um, why those are of particular interest? Like, what your background or yeah. experiences or, or desires are around those? Um, I've always really liked marketing and public relations, and I'm taking a class on it this semester, and um, I've applied for numerous internships in that field. Um, um, I, took, I also took a museum studies class, and I really liked the curating side. I got to um, curate a museum, museum exhibit, and I really liked doing that. Um, teaching has always been like my fallback plan. Like if I can't really find anything, I can <laughs> go to teaching. No offense to the teachers yeah, in the no audience. Is, is hard. Just personal preference. <laughs> um, I always, when I first started out in college, I wanted to do event planning. And so I still kind of want to do it um, a little bit. I'm really good at like planning things. Um, and then a travel agent, I'm, also, I'm really good at like planning vacations and things like that. So. I'm very organized with that kind of stuff. So, any yeah. questions for her? Is your undergrad in teaching? My undergraduate oh, is in hospitality, which is where the event oh, planning okay. and uh, travel agent come from. Oh. All right, we'll go ahead and have a seat. We're going to have her do this, but you know, again, it's great to have support of a group. So, um, this is something that could have been done just her by herself. Um, uh, having a group stay while a client does this just yeah. brings the energy. So, all right, let me ask you this. All right, here's our rating scale. Slightly more important, moderately, and much more important. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a few things about this, and you, they're going to be forced choices. Okay. So <laughs> if you had to choose between the job in public relations and museum curator, which would you choose? Um, public relations. All right. And let me ask you how much more you like that one. Slightly, moderately, or you like that I, that particular direction for a career much more? Uh, moderately more. Okay, so moderate is a two. We're going to get the exponent of a two. So reminded her on the goal and what she's looking at here. Yep, and public also the rating scale. Against teaching. Which would you choose? Um, public relations. She says with a smirk. <laughs> <laughs> Moderately more important to you? Mo uh, excuse me, slightly, moderately, or much more important? Three, much that more. Choice. Okay, so that's a much stronger <laughs> choice. Public relations against um, event planner. Which would you choose? Um, event planner. And is it slightly more appealing to you? Moderately more appealing or much more appealing? One, slightly. So she's comparing Public option A against travel agent, versus every should. other option. And how much more appealing is it to you? Moderately, so two. So very deliberate, one by one. Curator against teaching. Uh, curator. And how much more appealing is it? Uh, two, moderately. See, she's got the slightly, moderately, much down now. Curator so. against event planner. Um, curator. How much more appealing? Slightly. You see a curator a against travel agent. Slightly should be one. It should be one. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> travel agent. And how much more appealing? Slightly, moderately, or much? Moderately. It's too high. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Good to have friends. <laughs> Teaching against event planning. Uh, event planning. How much more appealing? Um, much more. <laughs> Teaching against travel agent. 
Uh, travel agent. How much more? <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, three, much more. <laughs> and event planner against travel agent. Um, travel agent. How much more? Um, slightly. One. <laughs> All right. So now what we're going to do is add these up and see what your priorities are according to how you rated them, but it's a forced choice here. So how many A's do we have? Five. Two. Two. Oh, sorry, the score is five. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was good because I'm, I'm, what people will do is they will just do um, how many A's when actually this A is weighted as a two and this is a three. So, so it's a trick question. Uh, what you really want to ask is the weighting of them. See, because that's the weighting. All right, let's look at the Bs, find them, add up the ex exponents. Three. Three. So see, that language gave them Zero. a little more targeted towards what we're looking for. Which is the weighting. Travel agent? A1. Eight. All right. So now what we have, obviously, you know, with, with adults, you may not need to put the priorities down here, but we can, we can do that. So first priority is? She can see the priority, but this helps, gives her a visual. With younger kids, you really need to do that because they have to be able to see it. So the waiting is up there, and now the order in a simpler form is down below, in case you want it. I don't think that should be on the list. <laughs> <laughs> it really doesn't come out as a priority at all, because mm -hmm. it's not. Um, all right, so tell us about how this, tell us about how it went. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised at the results, because I thought that public relations was a lot higher on my list, and obviously. I think that travel agent is a little bit higher. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think you rated it higher when you had to choose? Um, I think it's the, the opportunities to travel is more, there's more with a travel agent, and I still really want to travel a lot more. So, I mean, you can with public relations, but not as much as you can in a travel agent. Do you see yourself exploring um, some of these more than others now that you prioritize what do you see yourself doing yeah i'm definitely going to look into um a doing travel agent more and event planning a little bit more as well because i didn't realize how high up it was okay so when you look at them they're pretty you know uh five four and eight they're yeah. they're, they're a step above three is not you know but mm -hmm. obviously you did some sorting there with something. yeah all right yeah. all right give her a hand <laughs> Let's um, just debrief this a little bit uh, while we're still here and talk about how this works and uh, uh, t tell us what you noticed with, the, um, with this particular tool. Okay. Yes, it can. Um, that it can surprise you mm -hmm. because you're putting it up like, against each other. Instead of looking at it individually, you're comparing it, and that forces another type of thinking. Um, All right, so it's, this is different than a lot of the tools we've yeah. done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That whole forced choice, one against, so it's very mm -hmm. methodical. Yeah. 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 Very methodical. People who don't like, who, people who yeah. never met an idea they didn't like, mm -hmm. hate this tool yeah. and find it very valuable. So that's when you would want to use it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It feels good to watch them, too. <laughs> what else you notice about the tool? It clarifies thinking. Mm -hmm. Because when you're trying to compare five options to each other, it's not as easy as when you compare one to one, mm -hmm. and then one to mm -hmm. two, and one to three, and that way. So it, so it really simplifies. It. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So as opposed to... The card sort, which is a nice, quick tool, but the first thing you're asked is, which do you like the best? Mm -hmm. So it won't do the same thing this will do. This one is more powerful in its ability to help you prioritize when you don't see where one is better than the other. And that's, I guess, what you had said. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. I think it makes you be impulsive, and so your true feelings come out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. So you're, you're forced to just pick which yeah. one. Yeah. And sometimes people have trouble picking. Yeah. They'll be like, oh, I'm like, gotta pick. I know. <laughs> I, I didn't want to pick some, some of them, yeah. but I had to, so I did. Yeah. So you do. Yeah. So yeah. you do. It yeah. forces. Now, if I can also do the rating scale larger mm -hmm. so that the so that these really get sorted out even more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I could make this, uh, you know, 10, 5, 1, for example, and then we would even see some other priorities, mm -hmm. which I might do if my client's really having difficulties and really likes it all, and then we can... Especially if they're going to come out close. Right. So that it's not 5, 4, 4, 4. Yeah. Right. I know at first I was confused about the readings go. I was like, what does those numbers mean? Do they matter? And then I realized, it was like, oh, you have to count them up together. Yeah. Did you Often notice time. that I changed the wording as we went through? Yeah. Because this said slightly more important. And I said, I don't know what I said, but I said something else. Slightly Appeal, more appealing. Appealing. Yeah. appealing yeah. Which was a better phrasing mm -hmm. for hers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you might even create the rating scale very specific to the uh, to the issue that you work with. So that's a generic rating scale that's up there. In here. Uh, because as I went along, I knew that wording was a little better, so continued with that. So do you, you take that chart with you, or do you, I see a post-its on the chart. Do you do you it could. on regular paper, or? A lot of times, if I'm doing it with a group, it's on paper. Now, the reason I, I could have her do it on a little one, but if the group is there, and the group is involved in helping her do a creative problem solving session. And so they're involved in the generating when it's needed. She does the selecting. We may be taking this and going on to another step of the process that you all would be involved in. So now you're completely up to speed with where she's at because you've watched her. As opposed to her doing it on a little sheet of paper. So this is for public viewing even though it's hers. But, but I have them on little sheets and do it in little sheets most of the time. If I'm having people do it. Is it best to use this with mutually exclusive ideas so that you could only either be a public relations expert or a teacher? Or you could just be a travel agent or an event planner. You couldn't be both. So is it best to use in situations where it's that black and white? Take it back to the focus of the tool. The focus of the tool is prioritize. So works really well with distinct. Could it work with others? I suppose. Um, but the idea is, think of the function. Do I need to prioritize? If I'm looking at things that are similar, and I might do that, and there's a bunch of them, maybe it's clustering or something else. Um, but each tool has a, has a... You want to be able to separate out right. the ideas so that they're Not distinct. Not as critical that these are absolutely distinct. In the matrix, critical. critical. Well, maybe that's not true. <laughs> it does work better with distinct. Anything else? I used the tool once and I had a larger one like that and then had each person in the resource group do their own prioritizing for themselves just to reflect for the client so the client could ask them their opinions and get if they had. Because nice. some people might have experience in those different categories mm. and that nice. seemed to help them. Plus it also keeps, keeps them engaged, them doing, they learn yeah. another tool. Mm -hmm. So, um, great, great. Other ways? You've used it or could see using it. I think you can use it to like further clarify what you want to do after the matrix. Or in this after case, the PCA. After the matrix, yeah. but not before. Oh, after the matrix. To bring out, mm -hmm. but if you've hmm. kind of messed with the matrix, you've looked at the strengths and weaknesses, and and you're still going, okay, I got some I like. I'd like to continue to make some decisions. Yeah. You may or may not. Usually you wouldn't, but. Right. You might use it in combination after uh, highlighting, let's say. Right. Nice work. Nice. The other thing, this was a great example of in the simplest form with an individual client. You can also use this with a group client where you uh, have each individual do a PCA and then put the results into a group grid. Which and that's very powerful. Uh, this is a particularly good tool for that, and we do model the grid as well. Mm -hmm.